Hey, what is going on everybody? You can probably hear a six liter running in the background right now. It's right outside my shop. Getting ready to bring it in, but I'm letting it warm up because we're going to go over the most common issues on what cause no starts in these trucks on the high pressure oil system. Other things cause uh, no starts, but I'm gonna focus on the high pressure oil system because on this truck, this truck is having a hot no start. So this thing cold, uh, even what it's probably in the 40s right now here where I'm at and this truck has been running it's a customer of mine that I've done some work on actually I just swapped engines from a wreck truck of his into his new truck long story and I, I have a ton of history on this engine I know about this engine that's in it and so I was really surprised when he told me this happened but what I'm gonna do is on what I like to do on these is air test them, try to kind of figure out what side where the air leak is coming from because it's usually from an oil rail, usually a D plug or a standpipe. But what I'll do is I'll uh, get it in, air test it, see if I hear anything, and then immediately go after the valve covers, pull the valve covers off, air test it again, and I'm going to look for any leaks as well because doing a visual a lot of times helps out drastically. So we're going to go over exactly what to do that way if you guys have this issue you can figure out what's wrong with your high pressure oil system okay i've got the truck ready i'm gonna actually tear down a valve cover pull the valve covers no matter what i just i want to uh actually look at the d plug and the sandpipe just to make sure but uh, i plan on digging in because it's most likely on uh one of the banks one of the valve under the, one of the valve covers where the leak is i don't feel like it'd be um back at the connection at the high pressure pump because I'm almost positive this one's got the updated fitting and it could possibly be an IPR but I'm going to most of the stuff I've seen uh, is under the valve covers you occasionally get an IPR and that's after you've air tested and you've basically double checked to make sure that you don't have any air leaks in the high pressure oil system so right now I pulled the uh, charge air cooler pipe off. I have the cap off the oil fill. I don't even know if I'm pointing at the right. There we go. Okay, right there. Didn't know if the camera right. Um, charge air pipe, oil fill cap is off. I've got the ICP out. Um, and I've got a um, connection here that I'll put air, shop air to. And that's on the passenger side. On the driver side, I've got since I know I'm going further, I went ahead and pulled the degas bottle. I drained the coolant some, pulled the air filter box, pulled the uh, the uh, intake tube to the turbo, and we're going to listen out of the breather right here. So let me go connect shop air to it. And I'm not sure. Just a second. See if we hear anything. Starting to hear a little bit there, but is that the high pressure pump? Sounds like I got a leak from the passenger side. So that's basically what you're gonna do, but I'd recommend anybody that has a high pressure leak, if you don't know that you have good standpipe and deep plugs in, uh, and I'd say as long as your truck's been running fine within the past couple of years, it's you know, then you know that you have you put new ones in in the past two years. I'd say you're probably okay. Uh, if you're over pushing over two years, depending on the kind of oil and uh, other issues you've had, and you get a high pressure oil leak, leak you may want to go check the D plugs and sandpipe again. It's those O-rings. It's they're not a fix; they're a maintenance item. Um, the O-rings on top of the injectors can fail as well. I personally have never seen the. O-rings on the nipple on the rail fail. 
I've only seen one rail fail even while I was under warranty. I replaced one rail and I couldn't prove um, the leak because I couldn't end up blocking it off. I couldn't do testing on it and pressurize it, but I had a leak. I couldn't build pressure and I took the rail um, and I got a new one under warranty, put that one on, and then swapped it for side and ended up fixing that truck. So there could have been something lodged in there that failed and then lodged and then was causing an issue. But anyway, I, I've again not seen the, the nipples on the uh, nipples that go in the injector that are mounted to the oil rail. I've not seen those O-rings fail. Um, so let me go ahead and pull the valve covers and we'll see what we find. Okay, I got the valve cover off on the passenger side and I've got the air hooked back up to it. And I'm not really seeing anything. Normally you can hear if you have a leak. I'm still gonna pull the standpipe and the D-plug and see what I find. This one actually looks like the 12 millimeter, the new updated, and that looks like the 10 millimeter, the standpipe. So maybe we got an issue there. Um, as you can hear that noise right now, almost sounds like the uh, air leaking past the IPR but earlier when I was after I shut the video off I swear I heard gurgling start over on the uh, driver side so maybe we'll find our issue over on that side but right now I don't think I'm having an issue I don't feel any leaks by the injectors you can usually feel that and I'm not feeling any issues there, so I'll pull those out and update you guys. Okay, I've got both the standpipe and the D-plug pulled out of the engine, and I was actually wrong. The uh, the standpipe is the updated with the 12, 12 millimeter Allen, and you can tell because it's got the little white Teflon there under the O-ring on it, and you can see the D-plug has got the updated on both of them. I've inspected the O-rings on these, and they look great. Uh, sometimes you can they get weak underneath and they pit and wear out from behind But I don't see any of that So I'm going to put these back in on the passenger side and pull the valve cover on the driver and inspect everything Okay, I got the driver's valve cover off and you can definitely hear a leak on this side Let's try to figure out what it is Okay, that flashlight here Feel around down here. Not that injector. Not that. Not that injector. And it sounds like it's leaking back here. You hear it gurgling. Let's pull the standpipe and D plug and see what we find. Okay, got them out, and I'm truthfully not seeing anything wrong with this at all. Unless I have a little leak here. That O-ring doesn't look bad. Sometimes you can see where they're chewed at the edge, but I don't... The D-plug looks good as well. Maybe? No, that looks fine. I don't know. Okay, well, I'm gonna put two new of these in, one you know, one of each on this side and uh, pressure test it and see what we get. Okay, installed the uh, D-plug and sandpipe, no change. Let's see if we can, I think I know where it's coming from now. Let me use this hose and see if this helps for you guys. I guess I'll find out on editing. I think I know what it is now, even though I'm not feeling any air. Using that hose is kind of a, uh, to try to pinpoint like a, like a stethoscope. And uh, I'm going to 
pull the oil rail now and inspect the o-rings on top of the injectors because i have a feeling that's most likely what it is so i will uh update you here in a second okay we got that uh oil rail off and it is definitely the o-rings and i don't know if you guys will be able to see it but the one thing you can see That one looks a little chewed up, but the main thing I'm looking at here is, see how that injector has oil sitting in the top of it? This one does not. This one does. And that one's got a little bit of oil, but it's mainly empty. I'd imagine what's going on is it's, the air is blowing the oil out of there. So what I'm going to do is actually remove all eight of these injectors and re-o-ring them. And uh, the nice thing is I'll show you the kit that you can get to uh, fix this problem without buying new injectors. Okay, I've just shown you guys how, uh, what was it, injectors two, four and eight, I believe it was. Uh, definitely eight, that's what I pulled out here. The There wasn't much oil in them. And after I had done the air test, let me get this, let me show you the definite problem here. See that one o-ring on the right is the one I pulled out of this injector. You can see that's definitely not going to seal properly. So that is our issue. So what I'm going to do now is you can see I got this uh, standard kits from O'Reilly. I like to order from other places but I'm kind of in a pinch right now and I know they sell these kits. And here's the part number, SK85. Most of the time, the O'Reilly's, all the ones I've dealt with, usually carry eight of these in stock. And they will, it carries, see, it has one extra O-ring here. That it's, that O-ring is normally for internal, which you don't need that one. But we have the electrical connector O-ring, the two fuel O-rings here, you know, the white one goes at the bottom, the black one's at the top. Comes with a copper washer. Always have to replace it. Every time you pull the injectors out, it definitely needs a copper washer, which you basically need an overing kit. Uh, you don't need that one either. That's internal. And then you have the uh, little overing that goes at the top of the connector there. And then you have the new overing that goes at the top. This one's the hardest one to put in, but uh, you can, I walk them in without tearing them. I still, to this day, cannot figure out how to get that C-clip out. And uh, I don't know what you do easily to get that out. That way you can just slide everything in because it comes with a new C-clip as well. But I've done plenty of them without. So I'm going to replace that. I'm going to do all eight injectors. And then I will uh, air test again, and I'll show you that. Okay, so I just got the injectors back in, the oil rail back on, and I'm air testing it. And I may have to uh, pull my foot out of my mouth. Because the nipple O-rings look to be possibly leaking, because I can still hear it basically in the same area. I mean, I obviously had O-rings on those injectors bad. And it's still making the noise. So, I will pull the uh, oil rail off and I actually have a set of these because I had, uh, had somebody want me to do these and then they backed out and so I was sitting on the parts and I figured I'd just hold on to them if I ever needed them. So I've got the tool and everything to do it. I've got four of them. I'll do this one side because the other side's not leaking. And uh, we'll see what we figure out. Okay, so I've already replaced these three. I'm in the process of doing this one. I've got my new nipple and O-ring from, uh, I forgot where I bought these from. I got the tool here. With my torque wrench, I can read the torque that it takes to break something loose. And I was seeing around 140, 145. And sometimes what that means is, why is there mud in there? Um, 
it's reading a little on the low side what I found whenever I break something away or take something loose with this it seems like it reads on the low side if I remember correctly so I've been torquing these now to 155 foot-pounds and I'm going to show you I have not found one o-ring that's questionable yet so I don't know I mean maybe they're flat I've seen like today I had a customer that uh, had a fuel leak in his engine bay and it was the secondary fuel filter cap o-ring had flattened out so I threw a set of fuel filters on and took care of that for him. So, can O-rings fail and not really appear to be damaged? Yes. Okay, we got the nipple out. We need to pull the O-ring out. It's down in here. And that is the only thing about this that I can feel is it's possi they're possibly flattened out. They're hard. And maybe they're just not sealing like they should. So, I don't know. I don't know. I only see three. I throw the other one over there. Oh, that's that. Okay. There it is. Okay. Got worried for a second. Okay, throw this new one in. I always put a little bit of axle grease, wheel bearing grease, whatever you want to call it, on a lot of the... Sealing components on these. Okay, we've got the new o ring or new nipple. Set it in there. Take the nut. And I just have this thing fastened in my vise like this. I hold it while I torque them. So. Okay, I'll torque that down and put this back in and air test it and see what happens. I don't know. Well, this uh, definitely proved me wrong. And, and you know, I'm actually a little excited that it did because I normally see the same stuff over and over. And this is kind of exciting. So, I'm going to order more of those to keep those on hand because now maybe as these get higher mileage and that's why they, they sell them. Um, these are an issue so that's something to keep in mind uh, when I torqued like I said I torqued those to 155 and they seem to be holding up really well right now it's nice and quiet you can hear the hissing um, of the air passing by the IPR valve and so I'm pretty happy. I'm going to continue with the other side and get it all back together, get it running. And uh, I'm feel like an idiot for always saying that it's never the nipples, but then again, you always hear people have issues with them. Maybe they're not torquing them enough. Maybe people are afraid to put some real torque on them, and so then they constantly leak afterwards. And the fact that they, the breakaway torque was around 145, I'm not afraid to torque it to 155. I think that's a safe range. And I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty cool though. I can't, I'm very surprised. So we've addressed pretty much most of the common leaks. I'd say we've addressed all the common leaks underneath the valve cover. The next issue you'll have is the IPR valve being bad that could then act like a leak when you're cranking. So the high pressure oil won't build enough oil pressure to fire the injector. So you need a minimum of 500 PSI to start the engine. If you can't build 500 PSI and you air test and you can't find any leaks, remove, you know, I wouldn't even say get to this point. If you air test and you don't hear anything, and if you have one of the IPR testers where you remove the IPR, put you pressurize from there where the IPR is and you don't hear anything, I'd put a new IPR in it and try that out. I highly recommend a Ford or there's other aftermarket companies that sell theirs. 
Uh, I've heard some good stuff. I'm not going to recommend them because I haven't personally uh, dealt with it. If I buy some from them and I use it and I know those work good, I've installed several or I use them on my own and I haven't had any issues, then I will let you know. But definitely a Ford uh, IPR valve <clears throat> for the correct model year. I'm going to get this finished up. I appreciate you guys watching. If you would like and comment uh, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed, I really appreciate that. That really helps the channel out. And uh, shoot me some comments. Let me know if you guys have ran across any of this yourself. Uh, if you have any questions about what I'm doing, leave me some comments. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks, guys.